Hi guys, my name is Creek Stewart. I'm a survival instructor and I've been teaching survival skills for almost 20 years. And in this video, I want to teach you the technique behind one of the most iconic survival skills on the planet, and that's the bow drill, making fire with sticks, rubbing two sticks together to make a fire. Uh, there's probably no survival skill more famous than the bow drill. I remember when I first started out as a survival instructor, it was the one skill I felt like I had to know in order to teach survival skills. And I've since done the bow drill hundreds, probably thousands of times in the past 20 years, and I've taught thousands of people how to do it from all over the world. I'll never forget the first time I did the bow drill. Most people don't, because it's a pretty special experience that just kind of I mean speaks to the human soul a little bit, as crazy as that sounds. For If you've ever done the bow drill, then you kind of know what I'm talking about. Or maybe you've struggled with the bow drill and you kind of want to have that experience of creating fire from nothing. So I went home to my parents' house. It was when I just started out in survival and I, I was really excited to you know, do the bow drill for my parents. And I was out on this little concrete pad by the garage and I was using yucca and a kind of a makeshift bow that I had done. I didn't know really how to do it, but I managed to bust out a BFE. Now, BFE stands for a lot of things, right? Well, in this case, in my world, it stands for big fat ember, okay? So I busted out my first BFE, I put it into a tinder bundle, and I blew it into flame for my parents. And I think I was more proud of that than when I graduated from college, <laughs> to be honest with you. So today, I want to share with you kind of the skills and techniques that I've learned for mastering the bow drill over the course of the past 20 years, not only doing it myself, but teaching of thousands of peoples in the, people in the process. So here's my promise to you. If you watch this video through all the way to the end, I am going to give you what I'm gonna call the perfect bow drill technique, the best bow drill technique instruction that's available on planet Earth. Now, first things first, whenever you go to do the bow drill, you have to be wearing your lucky bow drill vest, like this one right here. This one's mine. You like it? Don't knock it, okay? I know what you're thinking. Creek's wearing a weird vest today, but this is my lucky bow drill vest. There was one time when I was teaching a course and a little old lady, 86 years old, came to my course. Her name was Sophie. And one of the things on her bucket list in life was to do the bow drill. She's 86 years old. She came and well, you know, long story short, she busted out a huge BFE, a huge big fat ember. And she was so excited she wanted to give me something. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, how about your vest? And so she gave me her vest. Now you need to know this about Sophie, okay? Now I say she's a little old lady, but she was jacked, okay? Like, I mean, she had pipes like Popeye the Sailor, man. So don't be knocking the fact that I'm wearing, don't, don't be knocking the fact that I'm wearing a little old lady vest today, okay? And this is a little old lady vest and I'm proud to wear it because this is my lucky bow drill vest. So the first thing first, put on your lucky bow drill vest, technique number one, okay? I've got a kit laid out in front of me here. It's pretty much the perfect bow drill kit, okay? So all of these pieces to this kit, I've got my bow, my hearth board, my spindle, my bearing block, my tinder bundle, all prepped out here, okay? Now, before you go to tackle the bow drill in any way, shape, or form, you wanna take note of where you're at. Okay, you notice I'm in a nice open area. I'm not all clustered in with trees and bushes or high grass or anything weird. I'm not on a slope, I'm not in a hole, I'm not in a swamp, I'm not on deep sand or mud. I've picked the highest, driest area that I can find. In fact, I got this piece of slate to work on. Okay, it's nice and flat. There's no weird ridges or bumps. I'm not having to fight anything. Okay, first thing, first things first, make sure all of you check all of those things off of your list okay now i've got my hearth board here which is made from cedar i'm going to take my knife and i'm going to do the first thing here is i'm going to create a divot you can see i've got a divot made already but i'm going to start a new one for you to see okay so i'm going to take a, my knife about an inch back from the edge here i'm going to start a new divot and this is just to seat the bottom of my spindle, okay? Now in this video, we're gonna focus on technique, not necessarily materials. This is all about technique, okay? 
making a divot right there with the tip of my knife. All right, now that I have the divot uh, carved into my hearth board, I wanna do what I call seat my spindle, okay? And to do that, I'm gonna actually start rotating my spindle into that divot. So I've got my spindle here, but I'm just gonna round it out a little bit. It's not totally finished yet. I'm just gonna carve it just a little bit here. Now on my spindle, you'll notice I've got one end that's really pointed like a pencil, like the tip of a number two pencil that you would take a test with. And on the other end, it's kind of rounded like a hot dog, right? The rounded end like a hot dog is the business end of this spindle. Okay, and that's the end that I'm gonna put down into the divot that I just carved. And I'm gonna round that off just like the end of a hot dog. It's the perfect illustration or shape that you're going for. All right, perfect, there we go. Now, I wanna wrap my spindle into the string of my bow, but it's very specific in how I do this. This is definitely a part of the technique, okay? I wanna take it underneath right here, I bring it over, and I wanna twist it down into that string. Now, notice what I've done here. You see my, where my spindle's at along this string? See how it's on the outside of my string? I didn't wrap it on the inside of my string. I wrapped it on the outside of my string so that as it travels on this bow, it goes all the way on the outside. If it's on the inside, it's always bumping up against the inside of your bow, especially at the ends. That's a big no-no. All that's gonna do is reduce the amount of distance that this spindle can travel along that spring, along that string. And as I'll mention later, traveling along that string is really the mechanical advantage that the bow drill offers you. So you really wanna have as much travel along that string as possible. All right, I've wrapped my spindle right in the middle. At this point, I wanna check to see if I can move my spindle along my string. Now, if I'm pushing it down or up, it doesn't slide. I can spin it, I can rotate it down or rotate it up, but I can't slide it up or down. That's a good sign, okay? If you can slide your spindle up and down the string at this stage, your string is too loose and it's just gonna slip while you're, while you're bow drilling, okay? Anytime the string slips, you need to stop and start again. We'll see if that happens to me today. So now is time for body positioning, okay? I've got my hearth board set out in front of me. I'm right-handed, so if you're left-handed, you'll need to follow these instructions pretty much the exact opposite. I'm gonna take my non-dominant foot, my left foot, and I'm gonna put it right on the hearth board like this right here, okay? About an inch or so away from the divot, you can see right there, I'm gonna put my foot right on my hearth board. I'm gonna go ahead and put my right knee back a little bit, like this right here. You can see I'm very comfortable. I can breathe really well. I'm not all clustered up. I've got my left foot on the hearth board there. I'm gonna take the rounded business end of my spindle and I'm gonna put it right in that divot that I carved. I'm just gonna stabilize the spindle with my left hand. I'm gonna take my bearing block and put it right on top of the spindle. Now the bearing block is what allows you to apply pressure onto the spindle because the bow drill is a combination of speed and pressure, okay? The speed provided by the bow and then the downward pressure provided by the bearing block. Now here's a critical technique point right here. Okay, I'm gonna take my left hand, my non-dominant hand, I'm gonna comfortably seat that bearing block right in the palm of my left hand, okay? Now, I can't tell you how often I see this mistake, and it's this right here. People start bow drilling, stabilizing that spindle and bearing block with their left hand or their other hand like this. This is what I call free balling, okay? 
typically happens by guys because they just want to muscle through this bow drill process. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to muscle through this. I'm going to free ball this and just stabilize this spindle out like this. Well, don't do that. It's impossible almost to do the bow drill if you're just kind of free balling, especially when you're really giving it the go with the bow in the middle of the process. What you want to do is take this crook in your wrist and you want to pin that. You want to you want to make your you want to start by making your spindle perfectly straight okay and then you want to bring your shin and your body to your wrist you don't want to bring your wrist to your shin and have a crooked spindle your spindle always has to be straight okay so i've got my spindle straight i'm going to bring my shin into my wrist like that right there you want to pin you don't want to be able to get anything in between your shin and your wrist. Number one bow drill mistake that I see happen over the course of 20 years of instruction. This right here is the number one reason why people fail at the bow drill. Number one critical, critical technique right here. Okay, I'm gonna bring my shin to the crook of my wrist. I'm gonna pin it in there and that is what stabilizes my wrist so that I can really give it the go with this bow. Okay. Now, I'm ready to go. Taking a deep breath, I'm making sure that I'm comfortable with breathing. It's on the outside of my arm, is on the outside of my knee. It's not on the inside of my knee. I see this. It's not on the inside of my knee. It's on the outside of my knee. Shin is pinned up against my wrist. The bow must be parallel with the ground. If it's not, if you're going down or up, your string will ride down or will ride up the spindle. So if you're bow drilling and your string rides down or it rides up, it's because your bow is not parallel with the ground, okay? All right, let's put it all together. We're gonna to start off really slow. Keep it in the divot here. We're gonna start off really slow. Now we're not going for ember right here, and I'll show you why in just a second. I'm gonna start off really slow. I'm utilizing the full bow here, okay? I'm not going, you know, this little two inch job in the middle. I'm going full bow because that's our mechanical advantage. And you can see that just within a few rotations here, I'm generating a lot of smoke, okay? Now here's the real magic of this process. You see this dust that is collected around the edge of this hole? Okay, you can pick, I can actually pick it up with my knife. See all that dust in my hand? That is the dust that's going to generate our ember. That's, that's our ember, okay? But as this is right here, what happens with that dust? Just flies all over the place. There's nowhere for it to collect. That's where our notch comes into play. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut our notch into this. I'm gonna knock this dust off, collect more of that here in a second. You can see I've got a sample divot right here with a notch already cut in. This is just a pie-shaped notch with the tip of that notch reaching the very center of that hole. And the way that I like to kind of create my notch, I lay my knife in just like that right there. I lay my knife in where the tip is right at the middle of that notch. And to make this really simple, I'm gonna take a marker and I'm gonna draw that notch, just like that right there, okay? And the very tip of that notch goes right to the middle of that divot. Just want a nice little pie-shaped notch. Don't overthink the notch. It can't be too skinny and it can't be too big. Just kind of an average slice of pie where the tip is to the center of that notch. Now you could cut this notch with your knife. I like to cut it with a small saw. Um, you could cut it with a saw from a Leatherman or something like that. I like to use a little saw like this right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a second and I'm gonna cut that notch. All 
All right, I've got one cut right to about the middle. And I make my next cut. All right, perfect. Now that I have my notch cut, I'm ready to go for ember. So I'm gonna set back up here, all right? What I wanna do is just double check through everything in my head. I'm in a good spot. I'm, you know, I'm not winded, I'm feeling good. Uh, my, my hearth board and everything is on solid ground and I should be ready to go, okay? So we'll see if I have to adjust my string. I may not, we'll see. I'll show you if I have to. I'm gonna put my left foot on my hearth board, like this right here. And now, what would happen if I started going for ember right now, like this? If I started going for ember right now, all of that dust would fall through my notch and right onto this rock, like you see here, or onto the ground. And that would not be good because this cold rock or that wet ground would just kill my ember. So what I wanna do is I wanna put something underneath of that to act as an ember catch. And so this is just a piece of bark. You could use a piece of cardboard or a business card. I'm just gonna place that right underneath my notch so that it acts as an ember catch, okay? Critical piece of technique kit there, okay? So now what I wanna do is just wrap my spindle. We're gonna do that exactly like we did before. Perfect. I put my left foot on my hearth board seat my spindle into my charred notch, my charred divot, put my bearing block on, bring my foot, bring my shin to my wrist like so. It's really important to run your bow drill parallel to the ground. If you run it up or down, your string is gonna travel along your spindle. So you want that bow drill to go parallel to the ground. Now, a common misconception with bow drill is that you want to start off giving it everything you've got, and it's just not true. I'll walk you through this process, but you'll see that I'll spend most of my time just filling my notch with dust, getting enough dust to create a sustainable ember. Then after I've got a nice little pile of dust, I'm going to go for about five seconds or so with everything I've got to generate the heat necessary to cause that dust to smolder. So let's try to get it done. I'm gonna lean in, I'm gonna pin my wrist. I'm not putting too much pressure on, I just wanna kinda of get this started. There we go. I'm utilizing my full bow. I'm not going like this. Full bow is my mechanical advantage. See, there's plenty of smoke. I'm getting a lot of dust. I'm just spending all my time right now filling that notch with dust. Now that my notch is full with dust, I'm gonna go five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna pull away nice and slow. I don't wanna kick my ember out. I'm gonna back off my hearth board nice and slow. I want my ember to breathe a little bit. I don't wanna do anything panicky or in a rush at this point. I've done all of my work. I set my items aside. Now, at this stage, here's how you tell if you've got an ember, if it's continuing to smoke, okay? You can see that I only did that for maybe, I don't know, didn't feel much longer than 15 seconds. Maybe it was a little longer than that, not much. But you can see this ember is smoking really, really well on its own. Now, I like really big BFEs, okay? I like a big, massive BFE, a big, massive, big, fat ember. This is a pretty big ember, and you could get a fire going with this, but I never like to take my ember right from where it is now to a tender bundle. I always grow it. It's a part of the way I teach bow drill that really differentiates some of the things that I teach. If you look up close here, you'll see my ember popping through the top there. I'm gonna go ahead and take all this dust I worked hard on, I'm gonna knock it right on top of there. 
and you'll see my ember climb up through that dust. Well, that philosophy is how we grow our ember. I'm gonna take some of this punky wood, which is just dry rotting wood that you can crumble in your fingertips. See that, how I'm just crumbling it? Well, that right there is how you grow an ember. Watch this. I'm gonna cover this ember up with this punky wood. I want you to see what happens. Remember I said I like huge BFEs. Watch, I can't even hardly cover it up fast enough. It's growing through that punky wood. Punky wood is a material that smolders, and so I can use it to create a big, massive BFE. Look at it, how it just consumes that punky wood and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I want an ember at least the size of a nickel. The size of a quarter is even better. I could build an ember the size of a dinner plate with this chunk of punky wood if I wanted. The bigger the ember you have, the better your chances of blowing it into a flame are. I'm gonna pick it up, like this right here. It's a great thing about the ember catch, okay? If I were in a survival scenario, I would create a secondary ember right back on my platform here. I'd create a secondary ember just in case something happened that this went bad. You can see right here, there's a little one already going. Some of that extra punky wood. I'll keep that as a backup. Now I'm gonna take my ember, I'm gonna place it into my tinder bundle. Like that right there. Right inside of my core. Now, you don't wanna just start going, and blow in this, okay? The purpose of your tinder bundle is to contain the heat of your ember, to help that heat build and catch all these fibers on fire. So I'm going to fold my ember, it seems a little counterintuitive, but I'm gonna fold my ember into my tinder bundle to contain that heat. I'm gonna blow gentle, steady breaths into my tender bundle like that right there. And that's really how easy it is. Fire likes to climb. So when my tender bundle's on fire, I like to turn that over and let the flames climb up through my tender bundle. And that right there, guys, is truly the perfect bow drill technique, the how, the why, and the when for using a kit like this to get fire going with sticks.